This is 7 National News in our top story this evening. The Federal National Council has debated a report on the rising price of fuel and approved a recommendation calling on the state to increase its subsidy on fuels to bring prices near the levels of those in neighbouring Gulf countries. According to Emirates news agency WAM, a committee formed to study the issue found that the high prices of oil were attributed to the fact that some oil companies imported refined crude because they have no refineries inside the country and the importation of refined crude is increasing the prices of oil derivatives. The committee said economic activity and urban development were also responsible for the marked increase of energy consumption. His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed bin Sultan Al Qasimi, Crown Prince and Deputy Ruler of Sharjah, opened the Sharjah Heritage Museum on Tuesday evening. The opening ceremony was attended by a number of senior officials and directors of government departments and dignitaries. Sheikh Sultan toured the museum's six galleries, which highlights the Emirates' natural landscape, culture and traditions. Representatives revealed that the Sharjah Heritage Museum, which took over two years to complete, will offer educational programs and family-designed workshops, in addition to temporary exhibitions and cinematic shows. The visit to the Heritage Museum would, would obviously give a visitor an insight to the, the heritage of the Emirate of Sharjah and the United Arab Emirates, uh, starting with a setting of landscapes. So what are the different landscapes in, in, the, in the country that are available? And then also uh, talking more in detail about celebrations, about livelihood, about trade. The visit of the, of, through the museum would give, would give them an experience of how all these things have been in the past, how they are today, and how they are experienced by the people. There are things that they can um, watch Smell. The Dubai municipality revealed today that the amount of retail food safety violations has been reduced from 40% in Q1 of 2011 to 20% in the same period this year due to more stringent regulations. Endorsed by the government of Dubai, the food chain conference attracted end users and manufacturers representing various food and beverage establishments. During the two-day event, representatives from international and regional F&B companies opened the floor for debate on their concerns regarding unsatisfactory climate control of food products, multiplication and cross-contamination of bacteria, which may lead to food poisoning. To avoid, for example, uh, temperature control, abuse, or any damage in the these kinds of machines, which is uh, you know reflected to the food, and the food will be damaged. So uh, let's make sure everything will be okay, and the machine it's not damaged. So this is kind of things uh, started before the start the layout of the any food premises to make sure everything or all process of food until they receiving to the consumer it's in the safe way. The better approach uh, because it's a hundred percent of the time is fully automatic with alarms fitted so if anything goes wrong even on, uh, on an evening if something goes wrong an alarm can go on a telephone and somebody can go out and solve the problem so yes automatic monitoring is better but it's not realistic in the home and it's not realistic uh, for uh, smaller premises at the present time. Hopefully when the costs come down it will be. But there's no reason why even in smaller premises they can't be fitted with alarms that uh, alert them to the problems associated with the refrigeration. Introduced last year by the Dubai municipality together with several international bodies is the person in charge concept, a regular training program that ensures all employees of the food chain industry are aware of the correct handling, storage and transportation practices. When we, we reached a lot of cold rooms and the door was open, the strip curtain was, was put on the shelf or something like that, and we realized that this is a basic problem, uh, as you said, uh, the knowledge of the staff. So we decided to make it as simple as possible for the staff to understand how to handle a cold room, and we decided just on simple pictures. We developed pictograms saying, do this, don't do this, uh, stuff like that. And this is helping a lot, I think, for the people to understand very in, a, in a very simple way. Most of the food companies focus quality control and quality assurance inside their factory. They make sure that the goods are produced to a certain quality, acceptable to a consumer, make sure that when it goes out of the factory gate, it is of the intended quality that meets cons customer specification. But after that, as you can imagine, there is a lot of stakeholders before it reaches the consumer shelf. You and me as a consumer, when we go into the retail outlet, we expect that quality. And we expect that good to be maintained, the product to be maintained in the right condition. Yeah? And it is stored and handled in the right condition before we pick it up. 
The Ministry of Water and Environment has lifted the ban on the import of British beef and British beef products into the UAE with immediate effect. According to the Emirates news agency WAM, the director of UK Trade and Investment in Dubai, Ian Gibbons, was quoted as saying that the lifting of the British beef ban is significant as it means greater opportunity for UK suppliers but also greater choice for the UAE market. The UAE's Ministry of Environment and Water banned all beef imports from countries following reported cases of BSE known as mad cow disease. The UAE imported 122.6 million pounds worth of British food products in 2011 up from 12.6% from 2010. Up next, we have your business news for you, so stay with us.